Judges 16, Samson carries off the cage of Gaza. One day while Samson was in Gaza, he saw a prostitute and went to her house to spend the night. The people who lived in Gaza found out he was there and they decided to kill him at surprise, sunrise. So they went to the city gate and waited all night in the guard, groom, guard rooms on each side of the gate. But Samson got up in the middle of the night and went to the town gate. He pulled the gate doors and door post out of the wall of the wall and put them on his shoulders. Then he carried them all the way to the top of the hill that overlooks Hebron, where he set the doors down, still closed and locked. Drilla tricks to Samson. Some time later, Samson fell in love with a woman named Drilla, who lived in Sorak Valley. The Palestine rulers went to Drilla and said, Trick Samson into telling you what makes him so strong and what can make him weak. Then we can tie him up so he can't get away. If we found if we find out his secret, we'll each give you one thousand ten one thousand one hundred pieces of silver. The next time Samson was at Drilla's house, she asked, Samson, what makes you so strong? How can I tie you up so you can't get away? Come on, you can tell me. Samson answered, If someone ties me up with seven new rose strings that have never been dried, it'll make me just as weak as anyone else. The Palestine rulers gave seven new bow strings to Derilla. They also told some of their soldiers to go to Derilla's house and hide in the room where Samson and Derilla were. If the bow, bow strings made Samson weak, they would be able to capture him. Drilla tied up Samson with the bow strings and shouted, Samson, the Palestines are attacking. Samson snapped the bow strings as though they were pieces of a scorched string. The Palestine had not found out why Samson was so strong. You lied and made me look like a fool, Drilla said. Now tell me, how can I really tie you up? Samson answered, Use some new rope. If I tied up with ropes that have never been used, I will be just as weak as anyone else. Till I got new ropes and again some Palestine hide in the room. Then she tied up Samson's arms and shouted, Samson, the Palestines are attacking. Samson snapped the ropes as if they were thread. You are still lying and make a fool of me, the ruler said. Tell me, how can I tie you up? My hair is in seven braids, Samson replied. If you weave my braids into the dress on the room and nail the loom to a wall, then I will be as weak as anyone else. While Samson was asleep, the love of his braids into the dread on the room and nailed the room to a wall. Then she shouted, Samson, does Palestines are attacking. Samson woke up and pulled the loom free from its past in the ground and from the nails in the wall. 
Then he pulled his hair free from the woven clothes. Samson, the ruler said, You came to love me, but you don't mean it. You've made me look like a fool three times now, and you still haven't told me why you are so strong. d i l l a started nagging and plastering him day after day until he couldn't stand it any longer. Finally, Samson told her to the truth. I have belonged to God ever since I was born, so my hair has never been cut. If it were ever cut off, my strength would leave me. And I would be as weak as anyone else. d e l i l a realized that he was telling the truth. So she sent someone to tell the Palestine rulers, Come to my house one more time. Samson had finally told me the truth. The Palestine rulers went to d e l i l a s house and they brought along the silver they had promised her. d i l l a had lured Samson to sleep with his head resting in her lap. She signaled to one of the Palestine men as she began cutting off Samson's seven braids. And by the time she was finished, Samson's strength was gone. d i l l a tied him up and shouted, Samson, the Palestines are attacking. Samson woke up and thought, I will break loose and escape, just as I always do. He did not realize that the Lord had stopped helping him. The Palestine grabbed Samson and poked out his eyes. They took him to the prison in Gaza and chained him up. Then they put him to work, turning a millstone to grind grain. But they didn't cut his hair anymore, so it started growing back. The Palestine ruler drew a big party and sacrificed a lot of animals to their god Dagon. The ruler said, Samson was our enemy, but our god Dagon helped us capture him. Everyone there was having a good time, and they shouted, Bring up Samson, he's still good for a few more laughs. The ruler had Samson brought from the prison, and when the people saw him, This is how they praised their God. Samson ruined their crops and killed our people. He was our enemy, but our God helped us capture him. They made fun of Samson for a while. Then they told him to stand near the columns that supported the roof. A young man was leading Samson by the hand. The Samson said to him, I need to lean against something. Take me over to the clumps that hold up the roof. The Palestine rulers were celebrating in a temple packed with people and with three thousands more on the flat roof. They had all been watching Samson and making fun of him. Samson prayed, Please remember me, Lord God. The Palestine poured out my eyes, but made me strong one last time, so I can take revenge for at least one of my eyes. Samson was standing between the two middle columns, columns that held up the roof. He felt around and found one column with his right hand and the other with his left hand. Then he shouted, 
Let me die with the Palestines. He pushed against the columns as hard as he could, and the temple collapsed with the Palestine rulers and everyone else still inside. Samson killed more Palestines when he died than he had killed during his entire life. His brothers and the rest of his family went to Gaza and took his body back home. They buried him in his father's tomb, which was located between Loza and Jura and at Estaol. Samson was the leader of Israel for 20 years. Judges 17. Bikah makes an idol and hires a priest. Miga belonged to the Abraham tribe and lived in the hill country. One day he told his mother to remember those 1,100 pieces of silver that were stolen from you. I was there when you put a cause on whole who else whoever stole them. Well, I'm the one who did it. His mother answered, I pray the Lord will bless you, my son. Miga returned the silver to his mother. And she said, I give this silver to the Lord so my son can use it to make an idol. Turning to her son, she said, Miga, now the silver belongs to you. But Miga handed it back to his mother. She took 200 pieces of silver and gave them to a silver worker who made them into an idol. They kept the idol in Miga's house. He had a sh shrine for worshipping God there at his home and he had made some idols and a sacred priestly vest. Miga chose one of his own sons to be a priest for his shrine. This was before King's ruler Israel, so all the Israelites did whatever they thought was right. One day a young Levite came to the Miga's house in the hill country of Abraham. He had been staying with one of the clans of Judah in Bethlehem, but he had left Bethlehem to find a new place to live where he could be a priest. Where are you from? Miga asked. I am a Levite from Bethlehem in Judah. The man answered, and I am on my way to find a new place to live. Miga said, why don't you say here with you? You can be my priest and tell me what God wants me to do. Every year, I'll give you ten pieces of silver and one complete set of clothes and I will provide all your food. The young man went for a walk. Then he agreed to stay with Miga and be his priest. He lived in Miga's house, and Miga treated him like one of his own sons. Miga said, I will revive as my own priest. Now I know that the Lord will be kind to me. Judges 18. These things happened before king ruled Israel. The tribe of Dan takes Miga's priest and idols. About this time, the tribe of Dan was looking for a place to live. The other tribes had land, but the people of Dan did not really have any to call they, their own. The tribe chose five warriors to present their clans and told them, Go and find some land where we can live. 
two warriors left the area of Jura and Ethtaro and went into the hill country of Elrim. One night they stayed at Miga's house because they heard the young revite talking and they knew from his Asian that he was from the south. They asked him, What are you doing here? Who brought you here? The right reply, Miga hired me as his priest. Then he told them how well Miga had treated him. The priest talked to God for us. The man said, Ask God if we are successful in what we are trying to do. Don't worry, answered the priest. The Lord is pleased with what you are doing. The five men left and went to the town of Raish, whose people were from Sidon. But Sidon was too far away to protect them, even though their town had no walls. The people thought they were safe from attack so they had not asked anyone else for protection which meant that the tribe of Dan could easily take over Raish. The five men went back to Jorah and asked Tao where their relatives asked did you find any land? Let's go! The five men said, We saw some very good land with enough room for all of us, and it has everything we will ever need. What are you waiting for? Let's attack and take it. We'll find that the people think they are safe, but God is giving the land to us. 600 men from tribe Dan strapped on their weapon and left Jura and Astao with their families. One night they camped near Kiriath Jerim and in the ter territory of Judah and that's why the place just west of Kiriath Jerim is still known as Dan's Camp. Then they went into the hill country of Abraham when they came across the Miga's house, the five men who had been spies asked the other warriors, Did you know that someone in this village has severe, several idols and sacred priestly vests? What do you think we should do about it? The 600 warriors left the Lord and went to the house on Miga's property where the young Revite priest lived. They stood at the gate and greeted the priest. Meanwhile, the five men who had been there before went into Miga's house and took the sacred priest fast in the idols. Hey! The priest shouted. What do you think you're doing? Quiet! The man said. Keep your mouth shut and listen. Why don't you come with us and be our priest? So you can tell us what God wants us to do. You could stay here and be a priest for one man's family, but wouldn't you rather be the priest for clan or even a whole tribe of Israel? The priest really liked that idea. So he took a vest and the idol and joined the others from the tribe of Dan. Then they turned and left. After putting their children, their cattle and the rest of the their other positions in front. They had traveled for some time before Miga asked his neighbors to help him get his things back. He and his men caught up with the people of Dan and shouted for them to stop. They turned to face him and asked, 
What's wrong? Why did you bring all this man? Mika answered, You know what's wrong. You stole the gas I am, and you took my priest. I don't have anything left. We don't want to hear any more about it, the people of Dan said. And if you make us angry, you only get yourself and your family killed. After saying this, they turned and left. Miga realized there was no way he could win a fight with them, and so he went back home. The tribe of Dan captured Suresh. The tribe of Dan took Miga's priest and the things Miga had made and headed for Raish, which was located in a valley controlled by the town of Bath Rehab. Raish was defenseless because it has no walls and was too far from Sidon for the Sidonian to help defend him. Defend it. The leaders of Laish had not even asked nearby towns to help them in case of an attack. The words from them made a surprise attack on Raish, killing everyone and burning it down. Then they revealed the town and settled there themselves, but they named it Dan after one of Israel's sons was the ancestor of their tribe, even though the place of worship was in Silo. The people of Dan set up Then the people of Dan set up the idol Mega had made. They worshipped the idol and the Levite was their priest. His name was Ju Jonathan, and he was the descendant of Gershom, the son of Moses. His descendants served as priests for the tribe of Dan, until the people of Israel were taken away as prisoners by their enemies. Judges 19 a woman is murdered before kings ruled Israel. A Levite was living deep in the hill country of the Abraham tribe. He married a woman from Bethlehem in Judah, but she was unfaithful and went back to live with their family in Bethlehem. Four months later, her husband decided to try and talk her into coming back. So he went to Bethlehem, talking alone, a servant and two donkeys. He talked with his wife and she invited him into her family's home. Her father was glad to see him and didn't want him to leave. So the man stayed three days, eating and drinking with his father-in-law. When everyone got up on the fourth day, the revive started getting ready to go home. But his father-in-law said, Don't leave until you have a bite to eat. You need strength for your journey. The two men sat down together and ate a big meal. Come on, the man's father-in-law said, Stay tonight and have a good time. The revite tried to leave, but his father-in-law in insisted, and he spent one more night there. The fifth day, the man got up early to leave, but his wife's father said, You need to keep your strength. Why don't you leave right after lunch? So the two of them started eating. Finally, the revised got off for a meal, so he and his wife and servant could leave. Look, his father-in-law said, 
it's already late afternoon and if you leave now you ought to get very far before dark stay with us one more night and enjoy yourself then you can get up early tomorrow morning and start home but the Levite decided not to spend the night there again he had the saddle put on his two donkeys then he and his wife and servant traveled as far as Jebus which is now called Jerusalem it was beginning to get dark and the man's servant said let's stop and spend the night in this town where the Jebusites Jebusite live no the Levite answered the aunt Israelite and I refused to spend the night there we we'll stop for, a, for the night at Gilbert or maybe we can even reach Ramah before dark they walked on and reached Gilbert in the territory of Benjamin just after sunset they left the road and went into Gilbert but the Levite Revite couldn't find a house where anyone would let them spend the night. They sat down in the open area just inside the town gate. Soon an old man came and drew the gate on his way home from working in the field. Most of the people who lived in Gilbea belonged to the tribe of Benjamin. But this man was originally from the hill country of Abraham. He noticed that the Levite was just in town to spend the night. Where are you going? the old man asked. Where did you come from? We come from the Bethlehem in Judah, the Levite answered. We went there on a visit. Now we are going to the place where the Lord is worshipped and later we returned to our home in the hill country of Abraham but no one here will let us spend the night in their home we brought food for our donkeys and bread and wine for ourselves so we don't need anything except a place to sleep the old man said you are welcome to spend the night in my home and to be my guest but don't stay out here the old man brought them into his house and fed their donkeys then he and his guest washes their feet and began eating and drinking they were having a good time when some worthless men of that town surrounded the house and started bang begging on the door and shouting a man came to your house tonight to send him out so we can have sex with him the old man went outside and said my friend please don't commit such a horrible crime against a man who is a guest in my house let me send down my daughter inside she's a virgin and I will even send out the man's wife. You can wrap them or do whatever else you want. But please don't do such a horrible things to this man. The man refused to listen. So the Levite grabbed his wife and served her outside. The man wrapped her and abused her all night long. Finally, they let her go just before sunrise, and it was almost daybreak when she went back to the house where their husband was staying. She crept at door and lay on there until sunrise. About that time, her husband took up and go ready to leave. He opened the door and went outside where he found his wife lying at the door with her hands on the doorstep. 
get up, he said. It's time to leave. But his wife didn't move. He lifted her body onto his donkey and left. When he got home, he took a butcher knife and cut her body in twelve pieces. Then he told some messengers take one piece to each tribe of Israel and ask everyone if anything like this has ever happened since Israel left Egypt. Tell them to think about it, talk it over, and tell us what should be done. Everyone who saw a piece of the body said, This is horrible. Nothing like this has ever happened since the day Israel left Egypt. Judges 20 Israel gets ready for war. The Israel called the meeting of the nation. And since they were God's people, the meeting was held at the place of worship in Mizbah. Men who could serve as soldiers came from everywhere in Israel, from Dan in the north. There is Seba in the south, Gilad east of the Jordan River. Four hundred thousands of men came to Mizbah, and they each felt the same about what those men from the tribe of Benjamin had done. News about the meeting at Mizbah reached the tribe of Benjamin as soon as the leader of the tribes of Israel took their places. The Israel just said, How could such a horrible thing happen? The husband of the murdered woman answered, My wife and I went into the town of Gil Gilbea Give Gavea in Benjamin to spend the night. Later that night, the men of Gavea surrounded the house. They wanted to kill me, but instead they raped and killed my wife. It was a terrible thing for Israel to do, so I cut up my body, cut up her body, and sent the pieces everywhere in Israel. You are the people of Israel, and you must decide to today what to do about the men of Gibeah. The whole army was in agreement, and they said, None of us will go home. We'll send one-tenth of men from each tribe to get food for the army, and we'll ask God, who should attack Givea because those men deserve to be punished for committing such a horrible crime in Israel. Everyone agreed that Givea had to be punished. The tribes of Israel sent messengers to every town and village in Benjamin, and wherever the messengers went, they said, how could those worthless men in Givea do such a disgusting thing? We can't allow such a horrible, terrible crime to go unpunished in Israel. Hand the men over to us and we'll put them to death. But the people of Benjamin refused to listen to the, the other Israelites. Men from towns uh, all over Benjamin's territory went to Givea and got ready to fight Israel. The Benjamin tribe had 26,000 soldiers, not counting the 700 who were Gibeah's best warriors. In this army, there were 700 left-handed experts 
circles sling a rock at the target the size of a hair and hit it every time. The other Israeli tribes organized their army and found they had 400,000 experienced soldiers. So they went to the place of worship the Bedel and asked God which tribe should be the first to attack the people of Benjamin. Judah, the Lord answered. The next morning, the Israelite army moved its camp to the place near Gibea. Then they left their camp and got into position to attack the army of Benjamin. The war between Israel and Benjamin. Benjamin's soldiers came out of Gibea and attacked and when the war was over, 22,000 Israel soldiers lay dead on the ground. The people of Israel went to the place of worship and cried until sunset. Then they asked the Lord, Should we attack the people of Benjamin again, even though they are our relatives? Yes, Lord replied, attack them again. The Israelite soldiers encouraged each other to be brave and to fight harder, hard. Then the next day they went back to the Gibeah and took up the same positions as they had before. The same day, Benjamin soldiers came out of Givea and attacked, leaving another 18,000 Israelite soldiers dead on the battlefield. The people of Israel went to the place of worship at Bethel. Well, 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 the sacred chest was being kept. They sat on the ground, crying and not eating for the rest of the day. Then, about sunset, they offered the sacrifice. It pleased the Lord and allowed to ask His blessing. Venus, the priest, then prayed, Our Lord. The people of Benjamin are our relatives. Should we stop fighting or attack them again? Attack! The Lord answered, Tomorrow I will let you defeat them. They right. surrounded Gibea, but stayed where they could not be seen. Then the next day, they took the same positions as twice before, but this time they had a different plan. They said, when the men of Benjamin attack, we will run off and let them chase us away from the town and into the country, country road. The soldiers of Benjamin attacked the Israelite army and started push, <coughs> pushing it back from the town. They killed about 30 Israelites in the field and along the road between Gibeah and Bedel. The men of Benjamin were thinking, We are knowing them down like we did before. The Israelites were running away. But they headed for Baal Tamar, where they regrouped. They had set on ambush, and they were sure it would work. Ten thousand of Israel's best soldiers had been hiding west of Gibea, and as soon as the men of Benjamin chased the Israelites into the countryside, these 
10,000 soldiers made a surprise attack on the town gate. They danished in the captured Givea, killing everyone there. Then they set the town on fire because the smoke would be a signal for the other Israeli soldiers to turn and attack the soldier of Benjamin's. The fighting had been so heavy around the soldier of Benjamin that they did not know the trouble they were in. But then they looked back and saw cloud of smoke rising from the town. They looked in front and saw the soldiers of Israel turning to attack. This terrified them because they realized that something horrible was happening and it was horrible over 25,000 soldiers of Benjamin died that day and those who were left alive knew that the Lord had given Israel the victory. The men of Benjamin headed down the Lord toward the desert, trying to escape from the Israelites. But the Israelites, Israelites stayed right behind them, keeping up their attack. Men even came out of the nearby towns to help kill the men of Benjamin, who were having to fight on all sides. The Israelite soldiers never let up their attack. They chased and killed the warriors of Benjamin as far as place directly is the Gvea. Until eighteen thousand of chase of these warriors lay dead. Some of the warriors of Benjamin turned and ran down and ran down the Lord toward the Riman rock in the desert. The Israelites killed five thousand of them on the Lord, then chased the rest until they had killed two thousand more. 25,000 soldiers of Benjamin died that day. All of them experienced the warrior. Only 600 of them finally made it into the desert of Rimon Rock, where they stayed for four months. This Israelite turned back and went to every town in Benjamin's territory carrying all the people of animals and setting the towns on fire. Judges 21 Why was for the man of Benjamin? When the Israelites had met the Mizbah before the war with Benjamin. They had made this sacred promise. None of us will ever let our daughters marry any man from Benjamin. After the war with Benjamin, the Israel Israelites went to the place of worship at Bethel and sat there until sunset. They cried loudly and bitterly and prayed, Our oh Lord, you are the God of Israel. Why did you let this happen? Now one of our tribes is almost gone. Only the next morning, the Israelites built an altar and offered sacrifices to please the Lord and, and to ask His blessing. Then they asked each other, Did any of the tribe of Israel fail to come to the place of worship? 
we made the sacred promise that anyone who didn't come to the meeting at Mizbah would be put to death. The Israelites were sad about what had happened to the Benjamin tribe, and they said one of our tribes was almost wiped out. Only a few men of Benjamin weren't killed in the war. We need to get wives for them, so the tribe won't completely disappear. But now, but how can it do that? After promising in the Lord's name that wouldn't let them marry any of our daughters. Again, the Israelites asked, Did any of the tribes stay away from the meeting at Mizbah? After asking around, they discovered that no one had come from Jabesh in Gilad. Gilad. So they sent 12,000 warriors with these orders attack Jabesh in Gilad and kill everyone except a woman who has been, never been married. The warriors attacked Jabesh in Gilad and returned to their camp at Silo in Ganan with 400 young women. The Israelites met the sent messengers to the men of the Benjamin at Rimon Rock, telling them that the Israelites were willing to make peace with them. So the men of Benjamin came back from Rimon Rock, and the Israel Israelites let them marry the young woman from Jabesh. But there weren't enough women. The Israelites were very sad because the Lord had almost wiped out one of their tribes. Then their leader said, All oh, the women of the Benjamin tribe were killed. How can we get wives for the men of Benjamin who are left? If you if they don't have children, one of these rich tribes will die out. But we can't let the men of Benjamin marry any of our daughters. We made the sacred promise not to do that. And if we break our promise, we'll do under our own curse. Then someone suggested, What about the Lord's festival that takes place each year in Silo, each held north of Bedel, south of Lebanon, and just is the road that goes from Bedel to Sekam? The leaders told the men of Benjamin, who still did not have wives. Go to Silo and hide in the vineyards near the festival. Wait there for the young woman of Silo to come out and perform their dances. Then rush out and grab one of the young women. Then take her home as your wife. If the fathers or brothers of this woman complain about it, this will say, be kind enough to let those men keep your daughter. After all, we couldn't get enough wives for all the men of Benjamin in the battle at Jabesh. And because you didn't give them permission to marry your daughters, you won't be under the curse we earlier agreed on. The man of Benjamin went to Silo and hide in the vineyard. The young woman soon started dancing and 
each man grabbed one of them and carried her off. Then the men of Benjamin went back to their own land and rebuilt, rebuilt their towns and started living in them again. Afterward, the rest of the Israelites returned to their homes and families. Israel was not ruled by a king. In those days, Israel wasn't ruled by a king, and everyone did what they thought was right.